Let us face, without panic, the reality of our times, the fact that atom bombs may someday be dropped on our cities. And let us prepare for survival by understanding the weapon that threatens us. An atom bomb destroys or injures in three ways, by blast, heat, and radioactivity. The blast of an atom bomb is its most important destructive agent. In Japan, whole buildings were flattened by its force. However, many buildings of sturdy construction, even though close to the explosion, remained standing. The principal dangers of blast are flying glass and debris, the fires it may start, and the danger of being crushed in collapsing buildings. The atom bomb destroys by heat. People caught in the open as far as two miles away suffered flash burns. Yet, protection could have been easily achieved. Here, a bridge post and rail shielded the surface behind it. Any solid material afforded similar protection. The third weapon of the bomb is radioactivity, thrown off at the instant of explosion. However, the majority of people exposed to radiation recovered completely, including a large percentage of those who suffered serious radiation sickness. Today, they lead normal lives. They bear children. Their children are normal. These, then, are the weapons of the atom bomb that we must protect against. Blast, heat, and radioactivity. Our cities are prime targets for atomic attack. But mass evacuation would be disastrous. An enemy would like nothing better than to have us leave our cities empty and unproductive. If an emergency should come, our factories will be battle stations. Production must go on if we are to win. Our offices and homes will also be posts of duty, not to be deserted. With the knowledge of the first atomic explosions to guide us, our chances for survival will be far better than those of the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, if we act on our knowledge and are prepared. The first job is to look over your own home for shelter possibilities. If you live in a private home that is well built, the cellar is the safest place to be. The lower you get, the more barriers there are likely to be against blast, heat, and radioactivity. Select the basement wall nearest the probable target area of your city. If the house is blown over, it will most likely fall away from this wall. If you have a workbench or strong table big enough to get under, move it into your shelter area near a wall or strong supporting column. If the time comes when you actually have to take shelter, lie under the table. If you live in a home that has no basement, choose a shelter area without windows on the ground floor. An interior hallway is probably best. In time of emergency, the shelter area should be cleared of mirrors and other objects that might cause injury. If you live in an apartment house, rules for taking shelter will be posted in your building. Learn them. Also, learn the location of public shelters in areas where you work or frequently visit. There are many things you can begin doing right now. Fireproof housekeeping is one, so clean up that attic. Keep waste in covered containers. Don't let trash pile up in the yard. Set aside a small supply of canned goods. They're safe from radioactivity. Have a good flashlight on hand. Electric lights may go out. Keep a first aid kit and learn how to stop bleeding. Make a habit of keeping a bottle of fresh water handy. A radio will be important for receiving vital instructions. Finally, prepare the shelter area and collect all necessary shelter equipment. In case of an actual raid or test drill, the alert will be a warbling siren blast, lasting three minutes. Once you hear this, act fast.
down the shades or blinds and close the drapes against flying glass. Turn off the burners of your gas or electric stove. Disconnect any heating elements, such as electric iron, hot plates, or bathroom heaters. Close all outside doors, but leave them unlocked. Turn off the gas or oil burners. Taking shelter may be a race against time, even when you have some advance warning. But possibly, there may be no time. An attack could come without warning. The sky would suddenly light up. If a doorway is right at hand, use it. If the nearest shelter is more than a couple of steps away, fall to the ground immediately. Flying glass and debris are immediate danger, so stay where you are until you're sure it's safe to move. If you are at home when a surprise attack occurs, crawl beneath a table if it is very near, or drop to the floor with your back to the window. The immediate danger is over in about a minute, unless the explosion occurred near the ground or water. In this case, Radioactive materials are trapped in the particles of dirt or water thrown up by the explosion. When these particles fall back to earth, they may be dangerous. So get indoors immediately after a ground level explosion. Cover broken windows against radioactive dust with blankets or cardboard. Civil defense radiological teams equipped with radiation survey meters will check on contamination in any bombed area. Stay under cover until you hear officially that it is safe outside. If you have been exposed to radioactive dust, wash the exposed areas. Pay particular attention to your hair. Get all the dirt from under your fingernails. If the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki had known what we know about civil defense, thousands of lives would have been saved. Yes, the knowledge is ours, and preparation can mean survival for you. So act now. Someday your life may depend on it. Yeah.